Draymond Green. Demarcus Cousins. I definitely had to do a video on these two, seeing as how they're both regarded as some of the top big men at their respective positions, as well as some of the biggest problem starters and head cases, but who's counting? Thanks for checking out another Baller vs. Matchup, and I'm sure if you watch these videos, you like to stay up to date with NBA news. So I'm sure you've heard about the DeMarcus Cousins signing to the Golden State Warriors and how he doesn't care what you think. <laughs> Simply put, if DeMarcus Cousins returns at full strength, the Golden State Warriors might just break history again. Let's tune in to Stephen A. Smith to see what he thinks about the deal. Nah, he don't like it. DeMarcus Cousins was one of the first NBA centers that I saw went from shooting no threes to shooting like 10 threes a game. Okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but he is shooting a lot and making them at a respectable 35% clip. Check out this quote from SB Nation, where in the beginning of the 2017-2018 season, he was shooting more threes than people like Durant, Chris Stapps Porzingis, Kevin Love. Unfortunately, his shooting is pretty non-existent outside of three-point range, or I guess inside. He doesn't need to be a great mid-range shooter, but shooting only 75% or even less than that doesn't really give you a great score in free throw. But DeMarcus Cousins has really made great strides in his shooting. Let's look at this comment. If he gets that a part of his arsenal, he will be a monster. <laughs> I'm sorry, he gets a 4 out of 10 in shooting, but Mr. I need a sponsor for that grammar? Nah. So people talk a lot about how Jamon Green, oh my gosh, if he can shoot, the Warriors are unstoppable. But that's the thing, he can't really shoot. He makes about a three a game, but only on 30% shooting. Speaking of shooting, outside of five feet from the rim, he's below league average in every single category. Sorry about that. I mean, the Warriors obviously don't need him pulling up for threes and mid-range shots all the time, but being able to be at least a respectable shooter, at least on the free throw category, could possibly help. And now, we're about to talk about DeMarcus Cousins' inside shooting. But wait, I understand that the inside shooting category is kind of hard to understand, but basically it's a combination of the volume of shots you score combined with your percentage. You can assume someone like DeMarcus Cousins is going to do really well because he dominates the paint on a nightly basis. After one game with the Grizzlies, center Marc Gasol said things like, Cousins went into the paint and took a few dribbles, and it was hard for Gasol to trust who was behind him at times. That's what DeMarcus does. He makes you not trust your friends in the paint. He gets a 6 out of 10 for inside scoring, only mainly because he sticks around the outside a lot during games. But with more volume, he'll definitely get up there. In general, Draymond Green isn't really much of a scorer in the Warriors' offense. That doesn't mean he can't get crafty around the rim, though, and doesn't have a decent array of moves to finish at the basket, even with contact. He plays really physical in the paint, and I'm interested in seeing how he would fare in a team with less stars around him. But he gets a 4 out of 10 here. With someone as physically imposing as DeMarcus Cousins, you'd expect him to be a defensive stalwart. But at this point in his career, he hasn't really proven to anyone that he can play winning basketball on this side of the court. One interesting skill he has is the ability to take charges at a pretty amazing rate. Maybe you should call foul on this too. I'm not going to do a Spongebob cutaway for Draymond Green's defense, but it's so good I thought about it. His defensive mindset is always on top of the game, and his ability to strip the ball from any handler is unfair. Draymond Green himself knows that his role is to be the catalyst of his defense, and he shines in it. We're going to watch a Warriors defensive possession, and I want you to watch Draymond Green here. As you'll soon see, he's not really guarding anyone. But not like last week with DeMar DeRozan not guarding anyone. He's defending everyone actually at the same time. And that's how you know his role is just to be a baller on defense, man. And he does it. Okay, look at DeMarcus Cousins and see if you could ever imagine someone of that size having this type of handle with the ball. Oh my goodness. A 
Along with his shooting, DeMarcus Cousins has really worked on his ball handling, upping them both to a whole nother level, and because of that, he's pretty hard to stop with the ball. I wouldn't say he's reliant on getting a pass, but playing with Rondo a lot, you're going to be the beneficiary of a lot of his dimes, so only a 2 out of 4 there. Okay, and let's talk about his passing. He's known to be an excellent passer, but keep in mind, he gets a lot of turnovers in a game. I'm talking about like 5 turnovers. So he has to work on that if he's going to really be efficient and reliable here. But if he keeps putting up stat lines like 40, 20, and 10 games, I think, honestly, keep filling the stat sheets. He gets a 6 out of 10 for playmaking here. So we're in the second consecutive category where Draymond Green shines, so he's lucky I put them together. I'm not going to talk about his unassisted scoring impact because if it's not off of a pass, Draymond Green's really not going to shoot the ball. But check this out. Last season, Draymond Green was 8th in the league in assists per game. And look at all the point guards, LeBron included, that surround that list. Amazing. Draymond's been the de facto point guard on the Warriors for a few years now. And he's the reason why so many of the stars can have amazing scoring stat lines. But he can't really score on his own, so overall in playmaking, it's only a 5 out of 10. Yes, DeMarcus Cousins, standing at about 6 foot 11, 260 pounds, he's a force in the paint. He actually used to have a pretty weak vertical in NBA 2K11, sorry, random stat. But he gets an NBA average athleticism rating of 6 out of 10 here. So Draymond Green stands at about 6 foot 7 which makes a lot of the athletic feats he performs inside the paint, especially against bigger players, even more amazing. Apart from that, he has a sneaky vertical leap, which he uses to take people by surprise for dunks or for really athletic blocks. He gets a 7 out of 10 for athleticism. So I love this beat change, and I hope you do too. We're about to look over the stats for both DeMarcus Cousins and Draymond Green. Okay, this is definitely a 1v1 that I want to see in real life because the Marcus Cousins barely wins here, but hopefully we'll see it in like a Warriors practice Snapchat. In 3v3, defense is the most valuable asset, so understandably Draymond Green beats Cousins pretty handily here. But in 5v5s, the ability to shoot the long ball is the most vital asset of all, and that's something that Cousins easily has over Draymond Green now. So, who wins here? The Golden State Warriors, what are you talking about? It's obvious that Draymond Green is probably not as good of a player as DeMarcus Cousins, but on the Warriors, he is definitely more valuable. But they don't even have to care because they're going to have both of these players on their roster next year. So Draymond, I'm going to need you to stop bullying DeMarcus, leave him alone, and treasure him like the teammate you're going to be. Okay, that's another video in the books, and thank you very much all for watching. With every video I make, I feel like I get better in a whole bunch of different avenues. Editing, talking clearly, and definitely decreasing the video length. I think 9 minutes, 10 minutes is kind of what I want to go for, but who knows. As more videos come by, maybe I'll change up the pace, but thank you guys really for watching this one.